Today, I'm going out to the mountains of Colorado to photograph the comet Neowise. I'm super excited about this. You might have seen some pictures of it before, but it's a really, really cool looking comet. Uh, and apparently it only comes around every 6,800 years, which means that the last people to photograph it would have been the ancient Mesopotamians. Obviously, I'm kidding about that. Uh, in terms of my camera gear, though, I've got the Nikon Z7 for the camera, and then I've actually got this new 20 millimeter f1.8 Z lens attached. Uh, this one just came out a couple months ago, and I've not actually taken a single photo with it. I don't even own this lens, I'm just renting it from B&H. Um, but at least for regular Milky Way photography, a 20 millimeter f1.8 is actually usually a pretty good choice. I just don't know if it's gonna be good for comet photography because I don't know how big the comet is. Uh, for all that I know, this lens is so wide that the comet could just be a little speck in the sky. And that's actually why I've got some other lenses too. Uh, all the others are just F-mount lenses that I'm gonna attach using uh, the FTZ adapter. This is the 35 millimeter F1.8, and it's also an F1.8 lens, so I'm just gonna use this if I need a slightly longer focal length. And then I've got the 50 millimeter F1.4 from Sigma, super sharp lens, that f1.4 aperture is really, really bright. And then I've got two telephoto lenses. Uh, I do wanna take some telephoto detail shots of the comet, and I think that these are both gonna be pretty good. Uh, this is a 105 millimeter f2.8 macro lens, and this is a 70 to 200 f4. Uh, between the two of them, the 70 to 200 f4 is definitely more flexible in terms of focal length, but the f2.8 aperture on the other lens is gonna let in about twice as much light, so that's probably gonna be what I'll use most of the time. Uh, but honestly, I've never even seen a comet before, let alone photographed one, so really I just threw in any lens that I thought could potentially be useful. Now I am going to head out pretty soon. It's starting to get a little bit darker and I definitely don't wanna miss this opportunity. Uh, so I guess I'll see you there and wish me luck. Okay, no joke, there's actually a moose behind me right now. Not anywhere close, don't worry. Uh, it's actually in the lake, at the very back of the lake. I was able to take a picture of it. I know that it's super dark and you can't see right now, but I'll pop up the photo. And image quality is really bad because it is so dark, but you can tell that it's a moose, so that's kind of cool. So of course step one is just to find the comet. I don't actually know where it is right now, uh, but I do know that it's kind of northwest, which my phone is telling me is roughly that direction. And I can also see the Big Dipper up there, and apparently it's supposed to be a little bit below the Big Dipper. I don't actually know though, I bought an app for like $3 that was supposed to tell me where comets are, and apparently they don't have NeoWise loaded onto it yet, so that was a little bit of a waste, but I do think that I can find it by eye, or at least point my camera in that direction and find it in some test photos. So I guess that we'll see. I'm really excited, I just got my first photo where you can see the comet, and it really is just below the Big Dipper, it wasn't that hard to find. Uh, unfortunately, I still can't actually see it with my eyes. I do kind of see it if I look a little bit off to the side of it. I can sort of see it in like the periphery of my vision. Uh, my understanding, I've known about this before, is that the center of your eye has cones and the edges of your eye have rods. And I believe that the rods are a little bit more sensitive to light, even though they're not as sharp. So at least that's how I've been able to see it. I just kind of look off to the side and I don't know, it's there. I think that that's really cool. Uh, hopefully when the sky gets a little bit darker, I'll be able to see it a little better. What I heard before I left is that the best time to see the comet is about an hour after sunset. Uh, it's an hour after sunset right now, and it's still kind of dim, but if I look at it, I can definitely tell that there's a comet there. It's really cool. Uh, if you've got a chance to see it, you definitely should. Not that often that you get to look up at the sky and see an actual comet there. Uh, and at least for photography, I think my photos so far have actually been turning out pretty well. And I actually think that before long, I will be able to see the comet a little bit better. Uh, you can see in that photo that the sky is still kind of blue right now. And once the sky gets a little bit darker, I just think that the comet's gotta be more visible by comparison. Uh, even if it's not, it's a really beautiful sight. I'm very glad that I came out here, but I think that in about half an hour, maybe an hour, it's gonna be even better. Update, the comet is super easy to see with my naked eye now. It's like an hour and a half or so after sunset, and it looks so cool, like it's amazing. I know that I'm kind of ruining my, geez, I shouldn't have looked at it. Every time that I look at the light, I kind of ruin my night vision, um, which is fine. When I'm taking pictures, I actually have to run over, turn off the light because it's lighting up my foreground. And you could argue that this is kind of a cool look. Uh, it's not really what I'm after right now, but I won't really show it when I'm running back and forth to the camera. I'm gonna try to make this video as smooth as possible. 
Now, if you're wondering, I'm at a spot called Mount Beardstadt right now. It's a very cool location, not too much light pollution, uh, although Denver is like, I don't know, an hour and a half or so in that direction. And I do think that the reason for the yellow color in the clouds here is because of the light pollution, but I'm really not gonna complain. I actually kinda like how it looks in the photo, and at least in the direction of the comet itself, there's practically no light pollution, there's very few clouds. I just think that I got really lucky. The weather here and all the other conditions turned out almost perfect. Even focusing my lens has actually not been that hard so far. Uh, the comet's pretty bright, so I'm just able to open up live view, magnify it, and then manually focus on the comet, which is pretty cool. I'm definitely getting some sharp photos here. Um, the f1.8 aperture on this lens definitely has been helping. I am using the 20 millimeter. And actually, I kind of like the 20 millimeter focal length here. It's not too wide at all. I probably won't even need to use my 35 or my 50. I just really like how these photos are looking. I don't really know why my light is getting so much dimmer. Uh, the battery still says that it's fine and I still have it on the same settings. So I don't know, I might need a new light, but ignore that. Right now I'm planning to switch to a telephoto lens. Uh, I've got my 105 millimeter macro. I think that the 70 to 200 F4 just isn't gonna capture quite enough light. So I'm using this lens instead. Um, it is a macro lens, but it works perfectly fine for regular photography too. So I'm gonna switch just to capture a little bit more detail on the actual comet. So I had to change my camera's position just a little bit because I didn't actually think about this ahead of time, uh, but I need the FTZ adapter in order to use the 105 millimeter lens on this camera. And I was actually using it to film with a different lens. So whatever, I just swapped that out and now I've got the 105. And what I've been doing is actually just taking some test photos. Typically what I'll do for Milky Way or any nighttime photography is bump up my ISO to an incredibly high value, like 51,200, and then use really short exposures, like three seconds, rather than like a 30 second exposure. And that way I can just take a bunch of test photos really quickly, rather than having to wait around like 25 or 30 seconds for every single test photo. So you can see these are my test photos here, and this is the composition that I settled on in the end. And I actually used the vertical compositions here. I did start with a couple of horizontal test photos, but you can kind of see how that turned out. And to me, the problem with it is just that it cuts off too much of the comet. Uh, I really like how the vertical photos have the whole tail of the comet in them, so I'm definitely gonna stick with that composition. And I also really like how the comet kind of looks like it's falling on top of the peak of that mountain. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what the name of that mountain is, so if there's any Colorado experts out there, I'd be kind of curious to know, but either way, I really like how that composition looks and I'm definitely gonna stick with it. And I haven't really explained how I'm planning to get good image quality here, because the problem with astrophotography at longer focal lengths is that the stars are just moving too much through each photo, so you'll just get blurry pictures. Uh, in this case, the longest shutter speed that I can use without getting any blurry stars is about three seconds. And my aperture is f2.8, because that's the widest aperture on my lens, which means that the first photo in my series is at ISO 16,000, which definitely is not a good recipe for image quality. But I did say the first photo in my series, and that might give it away, because what I'm planning to do right now is image stacking. And that's when you take a bunch of exposures at relatively high ISO values, and then average out the noise. And it only works in this case because I've got special software that can align the stars without moving the foreground so that it can then stack them together. But because I do have that, I'm just able to take a bunch of photos in a row and stack a really long exposure so that I have a lot of detail in this comet. And right now what I'm planning to do is maybe 50 or 60 photos. So I'm gonna start that time lapse right now and I'll meet you back in just a second. I just finished taking those photos. I think that they look really good. Uh, the one thing that I didn't say ahead of time is that even at that value of ISO 16,000, these photos actually still look a little bit underexposed. And I did that on purpose. That's completely intentional. And the reason is when you intentionally underexpose just a little bit when you're stacking photos, you can capture a little bit more color detail in the stars. And in this case, what I heard ahead of time is that you can actually capture the atmosphere of the comet. I'm not even joking. It's apparently called the coma, and it's kind of greenish blue. And when I zoom in on these photos, when I look at the ones that I just took, uh, I can actually see a little bit of green color in the center. And that's really cool. I'm super excited about this. And I think that it means that when I stack these photos together later, you'll actually be able to see that greenish blue coma on the comet. Uh, I can't wait, I'm super excited, but I am about to move my camera, I'm gonna take a couple more photos at a slightly different location, uh, so I'll see you in just a sec. Well, I'm back from the other vantage point. I actually walked down a little closer to the lake and I switched back to my 20 millimeter lens. Uh, I think that I got some good photos down there too. Tonight has just been absolutely incredible. 
uh, but I am ready to go back to my apartment because it's super late. I'm getting cold, my feet are kind of wet because of the lake, and uh, yeah, my apartment's like two hours away. So I'm gonna pack up, uh, but I will catch up with you once I'm editing those photos just to show you how they ended up looking. I made it back in one piece. It's actually three in the morning right now. I know that I shouldn't still be awake, uh, but I couldn't resist loading those photos onto my computer. And I actually edited a few of them a little bit. And out of everything, the one that I liked the most is that vertical photo at 105 millimeters. I ended up taking, I think, 53 photos during that time lapse. And I've already stacked them together. I've already reduced the noise and processed it a little bit. Uh, let me just show you the result. Here it is in Lightroom, and I'm really happy with how this turned out, uh, but there's a few things that I want to point out. The first one is you can see it actually has these two different tails. Uh, the one on the left, this is not a lens flare. This is an actual bluish colored tail on the comet, and then the one on the right is kind of the main tail, I guess, and it's sort of yellower in color. Um, another thing that I really want to point out is that I did actually end up capturing that coma, or that atmosphere at the very center of the comet, uh, it has a little bit of color to it. I'm super excited that ended up turning out. And another thing that I want to point out is kind of the color of the background here. Uh, you might be wondering why it's sort of yellowish at the bottom and maybe some greenish and even pink colors maybe at the top. And I believe that the colors at the bottom are light pollution, uh, which kind of makes sense. There's probably just a little bit of residual light pollution along the horizon. But I think that the colors at the top are actually what you'd call air glow. Air glow is colors that our own atmosphere is emitting. Uh, I've never quite captured it like this. I've captured it a little bit in a few photos in the past. So if that is actually what that is, I'm super happy with how it turned out. And I also got a couple of other photos that I like. I'll just pop them up full screen. And there you go. I'm really happy with how those turned out and I'm so ready to go to sleep right now. But I hope that this video inspired you to go out and see Neowise before it disappears. Or if you can't see this comet, just keep an eye out. You never know when the next one's going to appear. My name is Spencer, this is Photography Life, and I'll see you next time.